Hello, everybody. My name is Core Reaction. And I just came back from watching Spider Man No Way Home. Whew, I literally just got off the train. I literally just got off the bus. I watched the, the movie theater that I was at was in, um, was in Manhattan. I went all the way over there with my friends, and it was amazing. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to hang out with them afterwards because they went out to eat. But that's because I have to wake up early in the morning. And then I have to work later on that day. So I need my adequate amount of rest. Uh, the reason why I'm not in my normal setup with the lavender background is because my mother is nearby. And so with that being said, I don't want any, any interruptions whatsoever. So the things that I'm about to say, mm, man, oh, I can't even hold it in any longer. I'm going to just be patient enough to just warn you guys. I'm surprised that you guys don't see it in the title because it says spoiler alert. So I'm going to give you guys about five seconds and also please pause the video like any anyone's going to comment in my video anyways because no one ever does and eh, whatever. So, all right. So literally the movie left off, the movie literally uh, leaves off right from Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, we get this, we get the Marvel theme and everything. And within the theme, they didn't use no soundtrack. It was really, it was literally an auto, or audio recording from James Jonah, JJJ. Just make it simple. And uh, within that audio, it was just talking about how Spider-Man is Peter Parker, such forth. The audio from Mysterio when he was when he edited, it, making it seem like Spider-Man or Peter Parker was the one who. Uh, killed all those civilians and uh from uh from england when they was over there and um yeah so literally everyone was surrounding spot everyone uh, let's just say it's peter parker just to make it easier since everybody knows that this is peter parker that spider-man is peter parker but um yes mj and peter parker were together in the entire crowd it got it was they were surrounding them and just when spider-man just when peter parker took off with MJ, this guy literally tried to he, he leap and try to hang and try to hang on, try to grab uh, Peter Parker. And uh, I think I'm making it I'm making it harder for myself by saying Peter Parker. I'm sure that you guys know that I'm talking about the same people here, the same person here. So just say, I'm just gonna make it easier for myself for the sake of this video. So when Spider Man MJ leaped off, this one bystander just tried to grab him, but failed to do so. And uh, yeah, fast forward, fast forwarding it into the movie, uh, Peter Parker's life was just becoming miserable, and it just made it very hard for his friends Ned and MJ as well. Uh, it was like a rally, so to speak. And some people are for Spider Man, while others are against him. Literally, uh, I kid you not. I honestly, I should have seen that coming, but the principal. Not, he, no, it wasn't the principal. I think, no, it was the principal. It was the coach. It was the principal. And it was Peter Parker's music teacher, I think. One, There was three of them. Two of them was, two of them was more supportive, while the other one was like, nah, Mysterio was right. What you did was wrong and such forth, yada, yada, this. Everyone had their phones out, recording and everything. Oh, man. Uh, Flash Thompson is trying to, now, he's trying to get, gain more recognition by saying that Peter Parker was or is his best friend, even though we all know that Ned is uh, Peter Parker's best friend and such forth. Uh, Flash, actually, he played in, uh, he played a solid role later on in the movie, and I'll get to that in a minute. He actually did. Uh, I, I just like the whole dynamic. Uh, I like how... Everybody was just like some people was just surprised. Some people was so excited that they see Peter Parker as Spider Man and such forth, and the other was just looking at him in horror or in just pure disgust. But uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, fast forwarding it again, uh, it was to a point where Peter saw this. Uh, he saw an image of some. I think it was an object. And it was a wizard, and it gave him an idea of going to Doctor Strange. So uh, he did just that. He went on ahead. Before he did any of that, honestly, Ned was definitely be, being the third wheel. Because while MJ and Peter was, try was having a moment where they was about to kiss, here Ned coming out of nowhere. Didn't even ask if he was interrupting. He just 
pretty much interrupted. He pretty much just let himself in. It's like he's like he's like he's like that one person who has a key to your apartment even though you don't pay rent and he's just there. <laughs> but uh yeah, so anyways, fast forwarding it. I'm gonna continue on saying that because I'm I'm not I'm not gonna be able to pinpoint exactly every single detail left and right. I'm sure there's other YouTubers that, that has that can do that. I'm sure I can just go on my phone and just I should be able I should do that honestly, make it easier for myself. But I'm doing this from the top of my head, so just bear with me. But anyways, he went on ahead to see he went to the he went to see Doctor Strange, and we also saw uh, Juan, uh, uh, Juan, W O N Juan. Let's just say Juan. That's it. That is his name. Uh, what else? Um, it was it was a funny moment between uh, Peter and and Doctor Strange because at one point Peter was being so formal and polite and saying "Sir" when Doctor Strange has given him the permission to call him Stephen, which is his name. So it was just like a back and forth because as Peter was making mistakes, he just lost the privilege of calling Dr. Strange uh, by his name. And he and Dr. Strange is like, just call me, sir. It was it was it was uh, it was funny. It was going back and forth. And uh, when Dr. Strange was doing the uh, incantation, when he was doing the uh, the chant or casting a spell, because initially uh, the only initially the plan, the original plan was for everyone to forget that Peter Parker was Spider-Man, and that would include MJ, Ned, Aunt May, Happy, the ones who he knows, the one who he loves. And so as Dr. It's, it's pretty much in this trailer, so more or less that's self-explanatory. Peter Parker, Peter, he was just talking awfully too much. So initially, in my opinion, and this is just me, if I was Spider-Man, and if that was, if I was in his shoes, and I'm going to Dr. Strange and asking him to, if it's possible for him to uh if it was possible for him to uh make everyone forget that i was spider-man i would have chose at least three people it would one would have been mj the other one would have been ned and the other one would have been uh aunt may i would have kept it as that simple you he kept on adding on after he said mj okay then he said ned Okay, then you kept adding on to Mary uh, to Aunt May, and honestly, if Aunt if if there was a if if that was if there was a scenario where Aunt May would have forgotten, it wouldn't even be the end of the world because initially, initially Aunt May didn't even know that he was Spider Man until after the uh, the very ending of Homecoming. So honestly, he would have been able to be just fine with uh with that. And to be fair too, if I'm gonna to be fair, if I'm gonna say that, then MJ, uh, she didn't need to know either because she didn't figure it out or she didn't know about that until uh, Far From Home when they was on that mini field trip. But uh, honestly, at the same time, I really can't say what I would do if I was in his shoes because honestly, I don't think that I would do what he has done or did. I probably would have done what he has done. And pro- in fact, knowing myself, I probably would have made it worse than the, than the his initial outcome. So uh, afterwards, after, as he was kept on adding names and such forth, he was just breaking the. He messed up the spell, and if it wasn't for Doctor Strange's th- uh, quick thinking, uh, just like Doctor Strange said, things would have been catastrophic. And honestly, Doctor Strange he was ra- he was rather upset or pissed at Peter because I mean, and then he was he went on ahead and scolded Peter and say. I- Keep forgetting that you're a kid and essentially he is a kid he just wanted to live a normal life with no problems but as the famous quote of all great power comes with great responsibility and i'll get to that in a minute uh so uh okay all right Th- that's what happens oh, so let's talk about flash thompson because he did play the solid role so okay uh i think this was no this was after this was definitely after. No, no, no. This was before. They were trying to get into college. No, 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 no. This was after the the uh, after Doctor Strange was trying to do all that spell and Peter messed it up. Uh, they were trying to get into this college, and every single college that they have applied to just kept on denying him due to uh, due to uh, Peter's uh, situation. Uh, Due to the controversial incident that happened in London or in uh, in uh, Europe, they they've been 
uh, denying Peter's uh, application from left to right. They've been doing the same thing with Ned and MJ. All of them were trying to get to the same college and they've been uh, they've been applying to the exact same college so that they can stay together as a group or rather as a family, because that's pretty much what they are at this point. They may not be blood, but they're definitely close. So uh, but it was it was I, I felt it was kind of like a darn moment. And it was like because it's like it's not fair because, again, we we as an audience know that it wasn't Peter's fault, obviously. But the people who are inside of the movie, the uh, the citizens, the people out there, of course, don't see it that way. But uh, yeah, so it was a kind of sad moment. It was, and then actually, okay, let me talk about Flash now. I felt like I was getting a little bit off topic. So Flash, so Peter had an idea. Oh, oh, that's how it happened. <laughs> that's how it happened. I'm laughing now because of how funny it was because Peter was pretty much making Dr. Strange doing all of these tasks just because they wasn't in the same, just because they wasn't going to the same college as well. Dr. Strange was like, you mean to, <laughs> Dr. Strange lectured that young man. He was like, you mean to tell me that I did all of this just because you did, you wasn't able to get into the same college as your friends? You know you could have just called them. Peter just dumbfounded, just standing there. He's like, wait, I could have called them? And then pretty much Dr. Strange just slammed the door in front of his face. And that's when that led to uh that led to Peter calling Flash. And pretty much it was having a I'm here to bargain kind of scene, kind of moment, because uh Flash knows, Peter knows that Flash knows. Well, Peter knows that Flash knows that um that he can get in contact with the uh with the lady who, who is in control of the college board or something like that to where uh the college lady is pretty much able to uh to give in the good word that uh to not deny their application pretty much just to make it simple so in exchange of that in exchange of flash giving peter that kind of information for a whole week or two if not for a month peter has to swing the uh flash to school every single day for a whole month so okay so that uh peter he went onto the bridge and that scene as he was able as he found the lady he was trying to in his own uh peter weird way honestly he went on ahead and he explained saying how it was not his fault and that his friend shouldn't be punished of the mistakes that he made even though he didn't really do anything and then his spider senses went off and the way how his spider senses go off it's rather it, it it feels i don't know it's rather i won't i can't i don't want to use the word weird i don't want to use the word weird it just hmm. i mean honestly the movie has a way of saying uh the movie has a definitely a way of showing that his spider senses is going off but on the bridge, the first villain who he encounters is none other than Doc Ock, Dr. Otto Octavius. And so he went on ahead and did that. The fight scene was just phenomenal. I kid you not. Oh, man. I want to watch. I'm, oh, I, just, I really want to watch the movie again. I really do. It was just so amazing. But, um, yes. So he was... She... Uh, as Doctor was, uh, as Doc Ock was wrecking the uh, bridge and everything, everybody was able to escape except for the count, uh, except for that uh, the lady uh, who supposedly is in charge of the college board or whatever, whatever it is, and uh, she wasn't able to get out. Doc Ock being reckless and everything. I mean, he's a villain at the end. Uh, he knocked the car off when Spider Man went on ahead and saved it, and. Doc was trying to end up killing. He was actually going to go for the kill. And if it wasn't for Spider-Man's uh, nanotechnology, which Doc Ock ended up absorbing, not by purpose, but it, it actually went through his uh, his his arms, which explains in the trailer why his arms were red. We all thought, oh, he just got an upgrade. No, it was from the suit. And because it's from the suit, technically since uh, the, the Stark suit was part of Iron Spider-Man suit was part of it's still part of him so he was able to control it so he had his gauntlet 
to where he was able to control Doc Ock's arm. And so he used Doc Ock's arm to release, to help the lady, to pull himself up and to pull the car, which was dangling by his web. And that was pretty much the end of that scene. Uh, and he used the arms at the same time to wrap, uh, to wrap uh, Doc Ock. And uh, before that, Doctor Strange gave him the ability to. Uh, Doctor Strange gave Spider-Man the ability to use his powers a little bit. Not in that sense to where he, where Spider-Man is Doctor Strange now, but uh, because Doctor Strange initially wanted them, those villains who got, who got, uh, who were, who was able to make it through the breach because Spider-Man messed up the whole spell that Doctor Strange was trying to cast. Uh, he, uh, Doctor Strange gave him the ability to pretty much capture them and send them back to the, uh, to the cage layer where Doctor Strange will figure out what to do with them and such forth. Uh, as on the bridge, as he did that to, uh, Doc Ock, guess who shows up? None other than the Green Goblin. And... As the Green Goblin was coming towards Peter, I guess Doctor Strange, uh, I guess Doctor Strange saved him at the last minute. Yeah, he yeah he did because and it looked like Doctor Strange just got through fighting uh, the Lizard, <laughs> uh, Doctor Connors uh, from Amazing Spider-Man Two or Amazing Amazing Spider-Man One actually, but um, yeah, so he went on ahead and did that. Uh, Doc, uh, Doctor Strange pretty much fought the lizard off camera, off screen, but he is caged up with Oc, Oc, uh, Doc Oc, Doctor Octopus. They're not in the same, uh, they're not in the same area, of course, but they're definitely in the same room, just in separate cages. So, of course, Spider Man, being Spider Man, trying to be a hero, trying to save all of them and such forth. Uh, her. Oh yeah, the stain. Uh, his whole suit got stained up. I forgot how it happened. I think it was from. Oh, that's how it happened. Uh, uh, during at the uh, at, in the during the beginning of the movie, uh, I guess a random angry pedestrian or a angry person threw green paint on Spider-Man's suit, and so ever since then, Spider-Man has just had a hard time removing. The, uh, the paint from the suit and such forth. It took like half of the movie, if not towards the end of the movie, for him to be able to remove the paint. Well, towards well in the middle of the movie, I won't say towards the end, but in the middle of the movie, he had it, his the paint was able to be to be removed. I think a lot of people thought that he had a new suit. No, he didn't have a new suit. It's just that he he was wearing the suit inside out, just so that he can hide. It looked pretty nice inside out, and you could tell because of the wires and everything. Because that's the stark suit. And so because it got covered in paint, Peter was like, okay, let me just wear it inside out. Because he was really trying to scrub that, uh, he was really trying to scrub that paint off. And I, and honestly, when paint gets on your clothes, it could be a, it could be a sucker to remove. It can definitely be a sucker to remove. I kid you not. But, um, yes. So he went on ahead, uh, what, he, oh yeah, so he was, he, his job ultimately was to capture more of the villains who got who got sucked into this universe and so the next person who spider-man fought was electro jamie fox man he plays a good electro man i actually liked him i liked him in this franchise i liked him i like i i just i, I love it oh oh before we before we even before we even uh before Spider-Man even fought or began to fight or fought, yeah, before he began fighting uh, Electro, Sandman came into the mix. But Sandman wasn't an uh, enemy of Spider-Man. He was an ally because you know something Sandman must thought that he was Peter Parker, the Tommy Maguire Peter Parker. So, uh, he wasn't able to tell until like when he took off his mask and this was like after the fight. Uh, Sandman was dis was distracting Electro while Spider Man was able to do what he does and uh, capture Electro, and he ended up using the Doctor Strange uh, gauntlet, and he ended up just putting him away. 
And so that was that. Uh, Sandman thought that he killed uh, Electro. And so he was quite a little bit. He was a little more or less defensive. He was, I think he was about to pounce on Spider-Man until Spider-Man did the same thing to Sandman. So now you have the Lizard, Doc Ock, Electro, and Sandman in the same jail in the same um, location. And while that's there, MJ and Ned is just there keeping a watch out, pretty much. Uh, and then uh, afterwards, uh, Aunt May called Peter saying how one of the guys is, is in front of her. So Peter thinking that MJ, uh, thinking that Aunt, uh, Aunt May was in trouble, he's running all the way he he's running. He well he, no, I think he was in. I don't know where he was at, but he came from somewhere and he landed. Had his mask off just nonchalantly. At this point, people know that he's Spider Man, so he can just literally come out of nowhere, <laughs> like he did. And uh, he ran towards Aunt May just to find out that uh, it was uh, Norman Osborn. And Norman Osborn, he has like a split personality, if you didn't know. So. Um, before that even happened, Norman Osborn, he took off his mask and he was just pretty much wearing the, uh, his suit and he smashed the mask and everything. And he was just asking for help. He was really pleading for help. And so, uh, that happened, uh, Norm, uh, Peter and, uh, and, uh, Aunt May had a, had a heart to heart moment. And uh, I think I think Peter ended up just putting him into the containment with everyone else. And uh, yes, okay. Now here comes the juicy part because I was pretty much just I pretty much was just talking about the boring part. But here comes the juicy part. The juicy part was this: Doctor Strange was fight. Peter Parker was pretty much fighting Doctor Strange, and the reason why they fought. Is because while Doctor Strange wanted to send them back to their universe, back to where they were supposed to be at, and where the majority of those villains died by the hands of Spider-Man, but except when you watch the franchise, when you watch Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, and when you watch Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, Spider-Man didn't technically kill them. Majority of, uh, for instance, Doc Ock, he didn't die because of Spider-Man. Doc Ock did that because he realized what has happened, so he ended up sacrificing himself and ended up dying as a result. Norman Osborn died because he was trying to use, he was trying to kill Spider-Man with his glider, which impaled himself, which led to his defeat. Spider-Man, amazing, uh, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, the lizard, the lizard didn't die at all. He actually survived. He's actually the only villain who has actually survived. Uh, him and uh, Sandman. Uh, Spider-Man 2, uh, Electro. Electro died, but I think that was actually... Well, I, don't, I won't say that he died. He probably... He, he got defused. Let's just say that. He got defused and... Um, and it's so funny enough because the villains... They don't even know what had happened as a result. They don't even know what had happened. Electro described it just like that. Because he was saying he was getting ready for his big moment. He was absorbing something. And then he doesn't even he doesn't even remember what happened. I take it that the moment that he was describing was when before uh before Harry Osborne interfered. Because this was like before this was like a little while before Gwen Stacy died. But he was describing that moment, and then he doesn't remember what happened afterwards because he got blipped. Well, he didn't get blipped, but he got poofed into this uh, universe, the same universe that uh, Tom Holland is at, is in, as uh, in. Same thing with uh, Doc Ock. He didn't even remember what happened. He described it, and then he was like, "Then it doesn't it doesn't even come to him." As for Sandman, uh, Sandman, uh, he was pretty pretty much he pretty much was there. Uh, I don't know exactly what point of time he was the whip. I'm going to use the word the whip because why not? It makes it easier for me. Uh, I don't know exactly what point in time 
I'm sure it was like directly after when uh, Tobey Maguire, Peter Parker, Spider-Man forgave him and, and Spider-Man 3. But um, yeah, I'm trying to think of any anyone else. Uh, pretty much everybody was like, it was it was, a, it was just a funny no Doc Oct Doc Oct Doc Oct um, Doc Ugh Octavius made he had he's a spotlight of the movie. This man was just funny. His remarks, his back and forth banter between uh, the MJ and Ned and Peter, it, it, it was just so funny. And then <laughs> you know who else made the spotlight too? Um, Electro. He also made the spotlight. The constant back and forth, saying funny stuff. And such, <laughs> and such for um, way before, um, yeah, yeah, because um, what you call it? Because before, uh, after, how can I say? Yeah, because he was, because Jamie uh, Electro was butt naked in front of Peter, Peter and uh, Sandman, and he's like, "You're gonna act like I'm not butt naked or something like that." It was just funny. It was funny. And uh, yes, so fast forwarding, fast forward. Uh, Peter, he then wanted to. He okay, Doctor Strange versus Peter Parker. I felt like I went off the rail. Uh, I felt like I felt I went off the rail a little bit with that one. So the reason to why they, those two fought is because while Doctor Strange wanted to send them back to their own universe and to where. If they die, they die, and it's not really much they can do. Peter Parker said otherwise. He was like, "No, we, I want to give them a second chance." Peter being a hero and such forth, and so there was like a two. There was differences right there, and so because of the two differences, uh, they end up fighting uh, as a result. And so Doctor Strange was being Doctor Strange, using his illusions and everything, and took him to the mirror verse in a sense. And uh, Peter Parker ended up schooling Doctor Strange because Peter Parker is very smart. He knows geometry, and so he ended up using that as a reverse Uno card, and he ended up trapping Doctor Strange into this universe, into this into this mirror verse or whatever. So pretty much the the entire the rest of the movie went with uh, went on ahead without Doctor Strange until he showed up much 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 later. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, Peter ended up helping, let's call it the Sinister Six for right now. He ended up helping them. First and foremost, he went on ahead and helped Doc Ock with the chip in his in his head, with in the back of his neck. And uh, the reason to why he is like that, Doc Ock was like that because he had voice in, is it, voices in his head because of the chip and everything. But Peter was able to remodel that. And because of that, uh, because he was able to remodel it, Doc Ock felt like he was in his depth now. So he's like, all right, you fix me. Good. And he was about to do the same for Electro, supposedly. Uh, and meanwhile, Green Goblin was being, being, being Green Goblin. I don't know exactly what he was trying to do. And meanwhile, Lizard, Lizard is in that truck, the feast truck. Uh if you place the Samiac Spider-Man. Uh, Sandman was pretty much there. Uh, Electro was there. Green, uh, Green Goblin was there. And Doc Ock was there. And spider, his spider sense went off. And I was quite nervous. I was like, what's going on out there? What's going on out there? And it turned out... And it turned out... His spider sense was going off because of Green Goblin being very suspicious so he ended up webbing green goblin's hand uh norman's hand to that to the nearest object or whatever and such forth and so green goblin pretty much gave this whole speech oh his voice man norman osborne's voice man who gave me the chills up to this day up to this day it gives me chills his voice and so he pretty much gave this speech that motivated electro and said yeah i don't need to do any of this he took that off and pretty much, uh, what happened? What happened? Oh, yeah. Um, Green Goblin fought Spider-Man. They was having, like, a huge fight. And 
seemingly Green Goblin won, and Aunt May was trying to get out of there. Electro did his own thing. Oh yeah, Electro blasted Doc Ock out of the uh, window, and so Doc Ock fled. I thought, I thought that Doc, I honestly thought that Doc Ock was gonna die. I really thought that, but that wasn't the case. But Doc Ock did fled, flee, and uh, Sandman, Sandman was just being Sandman. I don't know. Oh yeah, Doc, Sandman fled as well. Sandman, he was like, I'm out of here. And uh, Electro, he. After he blasted Doc Ock, he ended up fleeing as well. And he uh, he took he took the uh, he took that thing that uh, I forgot what it is. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. For those who watch the movie, you guys probably would be able to uh, tell me exactly what I'm talking about in the comment section. But um, yes. So oh man, oh this that happened. I almost forgot. How could I almost? Mary, uh, Aunt May died. Aunt May died. How? Green Goblin. She freaking died. I don't know how I feel about that. I didn't, I didn't expect her to die. I didn't expect anybody to die. And honestly, I was in my mind, I was this close to thinking that MJ was going to die. Either her or Ned. But I didn't think that uh, that Aunt May was going to die. Great. Goodness gracious, man. How she died, she... She was protecting... She was just protecting Peter. Doing what family does best. Protecting... Uh, it was it was that scene. It was that it was like a mirror scene. Uh, uh, so pretty pretty much, uh, Green Goblin was beating the brakes off of Peter, and uh, Aunt May happens to be right there. She grabbed the serum, she stabbed it in his neck, but to to her surprise, it didn't work. And I don't know what that was supposed to do. I think that was supposed to what get rid of that. That small demon or that demon within uh, Norman Osborn, but it didn't work. And so he and she, before uh, Mary, uh, Aunt May, she grabbed this hope, this pole, ready to swing at Green Goblin. But little did she know, there was a glider right behind her and ended up going fast, fast speed, knocked her on the side like right at the lower abdomen I think she got impaled in, in fact that's what happened she got that was a hard hit like my heart dropped when that I didn't and then yeah so um it turned out that she was fine cause she she got cause um she got up she got up she, it looked like she just she got a bad injury and that she just needed to sit down. Yeah, she sat down all right because she wasn't getting up. I mean, she got up, but then she ended up uh, collapsing and she stayed down. And it was just, oh my goodness. And then what was worse is that these officers showed up, these police, these FBI, these agents showed up. And at the same time, here's Happy pulling up, seeing that MJ, uh, that, I keep saying MJ, seeing that Aunt May was on was was dying if not dead and he he had a, he had a small moment before they went on ahead and arrested him and it was threatening to shoot spider-man and they ended up taking a shot and it, it pierced it either pierced or he or he got hit on his shoulder or one of them it was just a god dang it moment it was one of those moments so um that happened uh peter may uh peter ned and mj made an arrangement and they made an agreement to whereas peter doesn't call mj she was going to press the button which would supposedly send everybody back there was a button that peter and dr strange there was a box it was a it was a containment box that uh 
she was well what happened was during the fight with Peter and Doctor Strange, the Peter was going after that box. And that box contains the spell. And if that spell breaks free, supposedly everyone goes back to their no, not everyone goes back, but it would just be chaotic, to say the least. To say the very least, it would be chaotic. And so uh, MJ was gonna press the box, but um, Ned ended up stopping her from doing that. And oh yeah, both of them, MJ and Ned, were at Ned's aunt's house, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But um, yeah. So they was trying to find Peter Parker at this point. They didn't know where he was at. So Ned, who had this thing on his finger, I guess it gave him gave which gives him the ability to just track people, specifically Peter Parker. So he was doing that about about a few times now. Well, two times to be exact. And guess who shows up on in the through the portal? Guess who shows up through the portal? Whew. Andrew Garfield Spider-Man shows up and I kid you not everyone went hammies everyone I recorded the reaction everyone went hammies man let me let me see if I can actually show up show the footage hold on not show the footage but hold on I think this is it Hear this? Greatness. Greatness. Wait, that was the wrong one. But still, that was the same audio. Greatness. Oh, and he did it again. Guess who showed up? The one and only Toby McGuire showed up. I mean, I'm, I shouldn't really be surprised because if Andrew Garfield showed up, that means that Toby, Toby McGuire was going to show up. But yo, both Spider-Mans and every the best scene ever. Both of them showed up. MJ and Andrew Garfield had both had a moment uh, because <laughs> it was quite funny, honestly, because they were trying to get their Peter Parker, Tom Holland, Peter Parker. But then said they got Andrew Garfield, Peter Parker, and then they later on got Tobey Maguire. Peter Parker. It was just the only difference that uh, Andrew Garfield was in his suit already. Peter Parker wasn't in his suit. I mean, Tobey Maguire wasn't in his Spidey suit. Whoo, man! And honestly, uh, eventually, uh, MJ and Ned both went to see the actual—not uh, the actual, but uh, Tom Holland Spider Man. They com- they uh, comforted him because. This man lost, and uh, they, this man lost Aunt May. Like, oh man, like how how do what do you even do? And then uh, Toby McGuire and Andrew Garfield ended up showing up, and then Peter was like, "I'm not, I don't want to hear any of that. I'm gonna send you home and set forth." And they had a heart to heart moment. All of them had a heart to heart moment. All. They, Andrew Garfield cried. Toby had a tear in his eye. If not, he cried as well because they was both telling uh, telling Tom Holland their loss. Toby McGuire, Spider Man, lose lost uh, uh, Uncle Ben. Andrew Garfield lost Uncle Ben, but he also lost Stacy Gwen, his girlfriend. And I'll get to that in a minute. That was I'll get to that in a minute as well. And. Uh, just had a heart to heart and uh eventually uh uh tom holland spider-man was able to put it uh get it together in a sense and so they was able to figure out a way to how they were going to uh uh cure them in a sense let's just use the word cure for the time being and uh yes so we, I, I just love, I just love the energy. I just love uh, how well Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, Tom Holland was together. It was just, it was just so 
like, wow, what are the odds of all three of them being in the same room acting the same scene together? It was just a phenomenon, one of the one of a one of a kind moments right there. It, it was it was really it was it was amazing. It really was amazing because here all of them was in a cult. I mean, here all of them was in a lab laboratory. Uh, Andrew Garfield putting on his lab coat. Uh, Tom, uh, Tom and uh, Toby both wearing the, the safety goggles and everything. And now here's the question, million dollar question, because everyone was poking at Toby because he's the only one, the only Spider-Man who we know that shoots organic webs, where he doesn't need a web shooter. Tom and Tom and Andrew both need web shooters <laughs> to shoot out the webs and everything. And so they were just talking about that and, that, and, and again and again later on they uh Andrew Garfield Spider-Man brought it up again. And it was just it was one of those moments and it was a funny moment too because Ned spoke to uh Andrew and he asked him, "Do you have a best friend?" And he, uh, Andrew Garfield was like he did, but my best friend ended up turning against me. I think that was, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think no, he, I know he's he told. I think he asked Toby Maguire that question, and he said, "Yeah, I had a best friend." And then Ned was like, "Had?" He said, "Yeah." Uh, he turned up. He turned against me. He tried to kill me, but he ended up dying right in my arms and such forth. And Ned was like, <laughs> he had that moment because. Spy, uh, he knows that obviously his best friend is also Spider Man, and you you know it was it was it was that it was uh, it was one of those moments. It was really funny, and uh, okay, so we had we had an awesome moment. All three Spider Man suit up doing these acrobatic flips and everything. Yo, it was it was so it was really nice. It was I don't even know what to say. Uh, okay, let's go to this I like how uh, it was a Andrew Garfield Spider-Man had a redemption because he wasn't able to save Gwen unfortunately but he definitely was able to save MJ when MJ and Ned both fell off of the clip uh, fell off the scaffolding so Peter uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man dove in and was trying to save save MJ but Green Goblin interfered and at this point all of them are fighting at one point, they was they never worked together before. Well, to Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield, they they never really worked together. Like he, they were they, every villain that they have fought had they have always been doing it by themselves. Tom Holland, Spider Man, he was part of a team. He was part of the Avengers. He said, "Oh, the Avengers? What's that?" <laughs> Toby Maguire, being funny. And then Andrew Garfield was like, is that a, he was like, is that a band or something? But um, uh, yes. So then they they ended up was they was able to uh, coordinate eventually and get the job done. But yes, uh, Andrew Garfield Spider Man was able to save MJ. Uh, Tom Holland Spider Man wasn't able to do that. I mean, he was trying to, but the Green Goblin interfered. But Tom, uh, but uh, what's his name? Andrew Garfield ended up saving her and it was just a gold moment because if you haven't watched Amazing Spider-Man 2 then you wouldn't understand that moment I, I know he felt so much better catching MJ I would, I, we as an audience felt much better because we all know or we all knew that he needed that moment, he needed that moment to like to just feel the lead and uh yeah um eventually uh eventually Andrew Garfield was able to have a heart to heart with Electro Peter uh Toby Maguire was able to have a heart to heart with Doc Ock uh Otto Octavius and with Sandman as well uh and Spider and uh Oh yeah, he was also able to have a heart to heart with uh, the lizard or Doctor uh, Doctor, not Osborn. Uh, I, I said it towards the beginning. It's not Octavius. I forgot. Doctor Connors. There we go. Doctor Connors. So he was definitely he was able to have a heart to heart with him. And uh, yes, 
Now, let's talk about that final scene, y'all. I was at the edge of my seat. I, oh, if only I was able to get my reaction. But I know I wasn't. I shouldn't. I know I wasn't able to record everything. But still, whoo. Tom Holland was going to go for the kill. He was going to actually kill Green Goblin. Yo, I kid you not. He was going. He was beating the brakes out of Green Goblin. I never seen. No one has seen anything like it. Like we, for the first time, seeing Tom Holland Spider Man not pulling his punches because they are fighting uh, the shield that was once on the Statue of Liberty fall off towards at the very edge of the water, and he punched him, missed Green Goblin, but you the whole he punched through the copper. Of the of the shield that fell that has fallen off of the uh, of the uh, Statue of Liberty, yo, he was going off. I and then he grabbed and then he grabbed Green Goblin's glider and he was about to go for it, but Toby Maguire Spider Man uh, stopped him. And then my heart dropped again. I don't like being. I don't like it when my emotions are getting entwined. I don't like it. Y'all gotta stop doing that because this man, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, got stabbed by the Green Goblin. And everybody was like losing their everlasting mind because everybody thought that that, uh, that he was gonna die right then and there. Thankfully, I mean, made us feel better in a way when Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, went on to say, I got stabbed before. Whew, man. Eventually, uh, Tom Holland, Spider-Man, he spoke to Doctor Strange because uh, Doctor Strange showed up as uh, Ned was trying to close the portal because the lizard got through and everything. That happened. Uh, so pretty much uh, Ned freed Doctor Strange from that <laughs> from that entanglement. Well, yeah. Well, he got entangled by Spider-Man's web. So, yeah, entanglement would be the right word to use. And... Um, yeah, so Doctor Strange was trying to cast. Well, he wasn't. Yeah, he was trying to bring everything back to normal. He was trying to hold on because he said, "I can't hold it much longer," or whatever. And then Tom Holland pretty much sacrificed his whole identity, in a sense, not sacrificing his identity because his identity was exposed. But he went on ahead and told them, "What if the world forgot who Spider-Man, who Tom Holland is, or forgot every, that everyone?" Or make or make the world forget that Tom Holland is Spider Man or Peter Parker is Spider Man, and so that would also mean that Ned will forget, MJ will forget. That means they wouldn't even be friends. Their relationship would it wouldn't even it wouldn't be the way how it is. And honestly, when he did all of that, I honestly in the back of my head thought that okay, at least maybe that'll bring Aunt May back. No, it do, it didn't bring her back. It wouldn't bring her back actually so i was like mm. they actually killed aunt may in my in my mind i honestly thought that they were going to do something to bring her back but if she's going to stay dead then okay i was not i was not ready for i didn't cry or anything it was it was very emotional and i my heart definitely go out to uh to spider-man but i really wasn't ready for aunt may to just die like that I really wasn't. I honestly thought that that I honestly thought that MJ was gonna die, if not Ned. Ned, he he survived because of Doctor Strange cape saving him, and because Andrew Garfield Spider Man saved MJ. But no one was able to save Peter at the end. Tom Holland Spider Man, man oh man, I kid you not. Uh, I don't man. Who? It's just so much, so much. <sighs> that was the best movie ever. Spider-Man No Way Home was the best movie ever, ever to be made. I don't want to hear no nonsense. I don't want anyone to say, oh, this was the worst movie. Screw you. Screw you. Don't, no, don't ever come to me. Or don't ever come over here and say, that this movie was the worst. You on your bonkers. Huh, give me the drugs that you're taking. I want a taste of that. 
Because there's no way you could say with a straight face saying that this movie was the worst. You're the worst. You just, it's that simple. You're the worst. But, um, yeah. So, eventually, uh, every all the villains, Electro, all of them was able to go back to, uh, to their to their universe, to their destined universe. Uh, Spider-Man went back, Tommy Maguire Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man went back, and uh, the world, every, everything in a sense went back to normal. Uh, everybody don't, everybody don't know, doesn't, no longer knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man went into the coffee shop to see that MJ works there, but, uh, MJ, of course, doesn't know that he is Spider-Man or he is Peter Parker or whatever. And for a second in my mind, I'm thinking I thought that there was going to be a spark to where MJ would remember. I don't know. I thought that, and honestly, when Ned walked in, I thought that MJ and Ned were a thing. I was like, wait, I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not with all of that now. I mean, we can, we, I'm, I, I can be with the fact that they don't know who Spider-Man is or, uh, or who know that I could be with the fact that they don't know that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, but if them two are dating, nah, 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 nah. You, you're crossing the line, buddy, you're crossing the line. But, um, it wasn't even like that. It was just the impression that it has given us or given me at least. But, um, yes. So, uh. Peter Parker, he's becoming the Spider-Man. Tom Holland is becoming the Spider-Man because Aunt May died. I guess that makes him more, much more maturer, or much, or not maturer because he wouldn't have been doing what he did if he was mature. But it, it just makes him more. It makes him more mature, much more mature at least, at the very least. Uh, his, he got a new suit, and from the looks of it, his suit is mixed with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man suit and Andrew Garfield's suit. So, I guess Tobey Maguire's in the front, Andrew Garfield's suit is in the back, and that was that. And then we was able to get the post credit scene with Venom, with uh, Eddie Brock. Venom, and then he ended up getting snapped away, and I was like, darn... So you mean to tell me that? Uh, so okay, so that pretty much confirms everything. There are, I mean, when you watch Venom, let there be carnage, the post credit scene, they were definitely in the same universe. But I really wish that. Ah, uh, I'm not gonna say it's a wasted opportunity. I'm not gonna say that. But I really do wish that Venom was able to uh, interact. But that's okay. That's okay. You wanna know why that's okay? Because if you look closely, Venom left like a small, like a, I don't think he, Venom left it by mistake or whatever, but the remnant of Venom, of the symbiote, is there at the counter. So, when Spider-Man returns for part three, oh, oh, what? Black Spider-Man? What? We potentially getting a Venom Spider-Man? Potentially getting Venom, maybe? Maybe? I mean, we already did in a sense, even though he wasn't, he didn't really appear in those scenes, except for the post credit scenes. But, okay, okay, okay. Um, I don't really have anything else to say, honestly, at this point. I, I really don't. I think I said a lot. I mean, I'm 53 minutes into the video. I don't think there's anything else I could possibly say about the, uh, about the movie it was it was phenomenal 10 out of 10 20 out of 10 100 out of 10 100 thousand 100 million a billion out of 10 it was it was really it was really good notice how i can't even stop rubbing my hands maliciously i can't even stop doing that it was it was good it was really good and honestly i really thought about having one of my friends on on my phone as I make the video so that way you can hear his thoughts too. But um yes. So um I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, the other post credit scene with Doctor Strange and Wanda with Wanda with the Scarlet Witch. Okay. 
Doctor Strange needs her help. I guess we will find out soon enough. And I have a feeling that, oh yeah, the multiverse of madness. Okay, that it was leading towards that. Okay. Oh, oh, oh yeah. If you watch one of the episodes of What If with Doctor Strange, what if Doctor Strange lost his heart instead of his hands? What's what's uh, the opposite of Doctor Strange? What was his name? Despro? Was it Despro? I forgot. I forgot the name. But if you watch What If, and if what if Doctor Strange lost his heart? You you would I I think I know where they're going with this honestly, but I won't get into that. I, I'm here for the review of Spider-Man, not for speculations of Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange uh, was definitely a GOAT, as always. Uh, Spider-Man. Oh, I'm about to watch the movie again. I really am. Whew. I'm tired. I did all of this in one take. I sat here for 55 minutes plus just to tell you guys my thoughts. Ah, oh man, this movie was amazing. And peep the Avengers shirt, man. Peep it. It was amazing. The best Spider-Man movie ever. This Spider-Man movie alone is better than all the other Spider-Man movies that I have seen. This movie was amazing. And honestly, I think I'm thinking more or less... Let's be honest here. Let's just be honest. and Let's just be honest as a fan. As a fandom. The only reason why we're saying that this movie is the best. Because you got two other Spider-Mans here. Oh, 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 oh. And they hinted. They hinted Miles Morales. They hinted Miles Morales. Because of the multiverse and everything. They, they hinted Miles Morales. They didn't say his name. But they said. Oh, oh. Uh. Electro was talking to Andrew Garfield Spider-Man or something. I think. Yeah. And he was like, if only you was black or something like that. Or I thought you would be black. Or it would have been more helpful if you were black. Or whatever he was saying. He, uh, he uh, that's a hint. I'm take. I don't care. I, you may call it as a stretch. I don't care. That's, that's a hint right there. That's a hint. You're hinting Miles Morales. Now, if Miles Morales ever come into the MCU, I think, uh, yeah, they will have to. They will have to do a, a solo movie. They will have to either do that, or you could put it on Disney Plus with the with the miniseries, like they did with WandaVision and Loki and everything. And honestly, I can see that having at least five episodes, maybe, maybe six. But uh, yeah. They, they, they hint at Miles Morales. I don't want to hear any of that nonsense. They, they hint to him. They did. It's just a matter of when they will bring him up. It's just a matter of when they will... Uh, of when they will put Miles Morales or introduce him into the MCU. But yes, I, I look forward to future MCU, MCU movies. I don't know what's going to happen from here. I don't know where this is going to go from this point onward. Uh, I don't know what Tobey Maguire or Tom Holland or Andrew Garfield. Honestly, the Amazing Spider-Man, uh, Andrew Garfield, they deserve. They they need to do a three. They need to do a three a third part. And Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, they need to do a fourth one. They need they need to. I don't know what is gonna. I don't know what the plot would be about. I don't know, but they need to. They need to, and I am in it. I don't think there will ever be a time. <sighs> I'm yawning like crazy. I don't think there will ever be a moment where Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield will once again travel through to see the other Spider-Man. I don't. That's not gonna happen because first of all, that would include. I think consider that the world would forget that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. I think that would include those two Spider-Mans as well. I think it would include that, but um. Yes, I just I just love the dynamic between those three Spider Man. You know, oh oh. Speaking of Spider Man, if you watch um, Spider Man into the Spider Verse at towards the end of the, the post credit scene when twenty twenty when two thousand and ninety nine Spider Man came in, they was doing this. They had that moment briefly. It was brief, 
you probably would have been able to pick it up, but they had that moment. I was like, I, was, I lived for that moment, man. I know it was a meme, but it, they had that, wait, they had that moment. They had that moment. Ah, man, oh, man. Oh, man, that was, whew. I, I got to watch that scene again. I have to, I have to. That movie was so freaking good. It's so good. I'm itching my freaking face. It was, it was that good. Oh, I, I know my friends are going to call me once they get home or the next day or whenever they're available. They're going to call me and they're going to be like, yo, 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 yo. You got to, you know, you got to talk about the movie. And I'm going to say, oh, huh, this video, click on this video because this video, I talk about the movie. I talk about my thoughts and everything else. This movie was amazing. This movie was amazing. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Are you seeing what I'm saying? Are you able to comprehend the words that I'm, that's coming out of my mouth? This movie was amazing. That's all she wrote. This is the longest I have ever done a video. That's not a truth. That's not a... I'm lying. I have done a video longer than this before. But as far as me sitting in one session, yeah. But... For a greater good. R.I.P. Uh, Aunt May. R.I.P. Her. Oh man, I'm itching. Yeah, <laughs> look at me. But um, yeah, that's a song. that's a cue for me to leave. So um, if you ever if you watch this entire review, you're goaded because I don't think anybody would sit here. And listen to me ranting on about how good the movie is for a whole hour and some change. But let me stop talking now. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all later. Whew.